Today we're going to be covering CAN, powers and grounds, discrete signals, and the fuel pump control module in the trunk. Those are the real critical items that we need to deal with and why that's important. So we'll break that up into four different sections. Before we get started guys, I wanted to just say that the wiring that I explain here is supported by a new product that we're gonna be releasing on the website which is essentially high level generalized LT1 wiring into just about any car. So it's gonna have all the wiring pinouts, the IO, and some information on how to program the ECM using the right products and tools in order to get your LT1, your Gen 5 LT1 running completely standalone like we are planning on doing here. So we're gonna be talking about powers, grounds, cans, discrete signals, and of course, your tachometer and, and the conversions that are used for the output of the tachometer so that it can work with most older dashboards. So we got a lot of cool stuff coming and this product is going to be offered on the website, link down in the description. Now as you can see I made a couple changes since the last video. I mounted and installed the DME. It is set in place. I have my positive junction box. Uh, right there and I have my fuses that I started to hook up I'm gonna go through the detail on that as well as a terminal block for can and grounds are gonna be installed there as you can see here we have a rat's nest of wires and we need to clean this up and make sure that everything is properly integrated with the car with the fuse box all the way over there and with the fuel pump control module in the back in the trunk let's go directly into the can wiring Most if not all CAN bus systems have a high, a low, and some CAN bus systems like J1939 protocol, um, which this is not, uh, has a, uh, a ground wire as well. Uh, most automotive systems have a two wire CAN system, high and low, and that's it. But in between the high and the low, in parallel with them is a 120 ohm resistor and you need two of them in any CAN bus. Those two 120 ohm resistors in parallel, one on one side and one on the other side, form a 60 ohm parallel resistance. So you can check to make sure that everything is still connected and good in that respect. So if you put your ohm meter on the high and the low, you should get about 60 ohms of resistance. If you don't, then there's a problem with either your resistor or there's a break in the line somewhere else in the CAN bus wiring. Now this is the OBD2 module, and this is very, very simple to wire, and it's and it conforms to most any vehicle standard anyway. Most OBD2s require power, ground, and then your CAN wiring. As you can see, we have our uh, CAN wiring in the blue and the white, high, uh, the high and the low respectively, goes into those two pins. And of course, there are two ground wires and a power wire. The power wire needs to be connected to positive battery, not switched power and we'll talk about the power wiring later. But the ground is very simple. We just took both of those grounds and put them to uh, a, a ground lug, which we can put anywhere onto chassis, and that serves as our ground. Now, for the can wiring, I am breaking that up in a terminal block here. Ignore this black wire. This terminal right here is reserved for ground. This one here is not used for anything, and as you can see here, this one is can high, that's the blue, and can low is the white. And if you look really, really closely here, you can see that I have a 120 ohm resistor that's bridged in between the high and the low that serves as a terminating resistor. The other resistor is built into the actual ECM. So I have three different cans going into these terminals and that acts as a hub. If you can see right here, you'll see that my can wiring has like a tertiary uh, point right there where three different things go to. And those three things are the fuel pump control module, it basically snakes all around back and goes into the fuel pump control module. The second thing is the ECM, of course. We have to connect it directly to the ECM so that um, we can get data from the ECM. And that data will go to, of course, the communication between the ECM and the fuel pump control module, but of course, the OBD2 port, which is already wired and installed and snaked into the car. Now this here for power distribution is our main fuse box. And as you can see, we have a line, a yellow line going down the center of it. And that yellow line denotes that the left side is switched power and the right side is actual um, battery power. So basically this is two different fuse boxes completely, but it's all housed in one concise uh, unit. 
I have uh, different size fuses here, and these fuses conform to the original wiring diagram specifications for, for fuse sizing on these circuits. So on the switched power side, we have three separate fuses. We have a 10 amp and two fives, and the 10 amp fuse is going to the fuel pump control module. This requires switched power to be po powered on to the fuel pump control module that activates it whenever you key on. The other two that have still yet to be wired for um, the main relay, and the uh, ECM. On this side, here we have five fuses going to battery plus power, and those fuses, um, this one right, one right here that I talked about earlier, this is power for the OBD2 port, so that's, gonna, that's basically set up right there. And the other ones are the DME, uh, two for the DME, one for the main relay, and one for the EVAP solenoid. So the main relay is, is right down here. It's got a relay holder and the relay is right here. And this relay essentially just takes switched power. Whenever you turn the key on, it takes switched power and it activates high, high current power that goes directly and distributes to the switched power. And this switched power obviously turns on the ECM and everything else associated with it. Now on the diagram, you can see that we have a main relay. It's an 8787A relay. And basically what that means is that 87A is permanently or uh, standard closed, um, normally closed. So when you activate the relay, it opens 87A and closes 87, at which point the pin 87 activates all those violet with a blue stripe wires that are going to the ECM and basically powers the ECM up. On pin 30, we have a 20 amp, uh, and a 20 amp fuse that's going to battery power, and we are switching that relay through the key cycle on the C101. As you can see, the C101 has switched power that's going to power the relay on pin 86, and then pin 85 is ground. So the 20 amp fuse on that main relay is this yellow 20 amp fuse right here, and that needs to get wired up and snaked around, and then wired into the pin 30 on the relay, and everything else needs to wire up to it. So let's wire up that relay now. Now that we have all of our 87 relay pins connected, which basically is power on to the DME, switched power through the relay, this goes into pin 87. And in order to install this, you have a relay connector or a relay pin there, and you can use a simple weather pack uh, crimper in order to crimp these lines on this. They have to make sure that one side here, this is for the insulation, that that side on the insulation is seated deep enough where you can crimp onto the insulation as well so that you're not making contact only with the pin. So when you have this thing connected, all you do is squeeze, and now it's good to go. Now let's take a look at that insulation part. You can see right here that that also needs to squeeze over the insulation. So you just kind of go one of these deals and then something like this. So crimp that down, makes a nice circular connector there. So now this is ready to go into pin 87 on the relay. So we have pin 30, we have pin 87, and we need to do 86 and as well 85. So 85 is very simple. That's just a simple ground. So we're gonna use a lug in order to connect to our terminal block on the ground, and that is gonna go straight to pin 85 on the relay. All right, now we wanna plug in the relay itself. Remember, this guy here is 87, and 87 is the one on the back. 87, 30 goes here. Now that the main relay is done, we got that basically hooked up, we have one more switched power here. This is a five amp, and that goes directly to this guy on the X152. It's a green wire with a violet stripe, so hooking what we need to do essentially is we're removing these connectors, right? I've already removed the big black one, the X150, and this is the X152. There's a couple of wires here. This one here we're gonna focus on right now. And what I wanna do is I wanna disconnect this connector and I wanna tap right into this, disconnect all of the other wires that are not applicable, and that really slims up this entire wiring harness.
Now, we have a 10 amp fuse. That's uh, this red one down there. And that guy goes to this one right here. This is a red wire with a green stripe. And then finally, for power, you have your red with a brown stripe here is on the X152 pin 12. And that goes to a 10 amp fuse. So we're gonna wire the 10 amp fuse from all the way over here around underneath and to that wire. All right, so powers and grounds are all complete here uh, between the ECM and the chassis. We do still have to do our next section here, which is going to be discretes. Now discretes are basically a fancy term for signals, signals that need to be transmitted between the car and the ECM, and the ECM and the fuel control module. There are two wires that go from the fuel control module to the ECM. One's a violet with a yellow stripe and another one is a green with a gray stripe. Those two need to be wired up directly. And as you can see here, I've wired up the green with a gray stripe and the violet with a yellow stripe. And they go to the blue connector, as you can see here, on the actual uh, ECM. That's really, this, this connector here, consider this like your X6004 for the BMW guys. This is the one that really integrates with the rest of the body. Um, those discretes that are handled through that connector are the clutch pedal and the, uh, the accelerator pedal, uh, which is what we're gonna wire right here. As you can see, I've got essentially um, the accelerator pedal wires and the clutch pedal wires um, wired and snaked through the dashboard into the car. So that's basically been, been set up. Um, and everything needs to be cleaned up, but right now I just wanna take the six wires that connect the accelerator pedal and connect them here. And then there's also three wires on this little strand here that go from the clutch pedal to here. And that way uh, I can either integrate a clutch pedal or just integrate a switch, which can be cl classified as like a safety switch or something, but it needs to be depressed or see ground in order for the car to start. So it's very, very important that this clutch switch gets wired up and installed. And as you can see here, I've got the provisions for it already. There's two different methods to fusing two copper wires together. The first is what we're doing here, which is basically crimping and using a, uh, a heat gun to, to, to cool the, the shrink wrap uh, to make a really good connection. The second is soldering. Both work just fine for automotive application. Looking back into the trunk, you can see that there are a number of pigtail wires that come off of this fuel cell control module. And the, one that, the ones that I was referring to earlier are the, uh, there's this green one in here, that's that green with the gray stripe. That's that one right there. Um, and then there's the, uh, this gray one here is actually for this black with a purple stripe. I'm sorry, it's purple, it's black with a purple stripe. And that one is actually power, so we already addressed that one earlier. And this is that other one I mentioned, that violet with a yellow stripe that needs, uh, that needs to be wired up. So we do need to formalize this wiring a little bit, cut off some of the wires and, and trim it and clean it. Um, but this is basically done in terms of in terms of the you know the low voltage discrete wiring. Now down here we have our body connector harness to the ECM, and what that houses is things like coolant temperature, oil pressure, switched power, the start, and tack tachometer as well. So this is the connector for the E28, but it varies between your model and you can do C101 for E30s or anything else. You can do E36, of course, this is an X20 for uh, a lot of the mid-90s and 2000s models. And uh, I just basically spli spliced all of those wires. This is for the coolant temp, which I have integrated into the, uh, the LT1 already. And here is my start wire. That goes into a yellow wire on the harness. This is my switched power. So the brown is the oil pressure signal and the blue is the alternator light. So the intent here with this wiring, and I'm just gonna feign this only because it, um, it's not gonna be permanent. I'm gonna be taking all this out anyway, but I wanted to make sure that the wire lengths were good so that I can wire it up into the ECM and integrate that into the harness as a separate connector. I can disconnect so I can make sure that this thing is good to go. And then this is gonna end up coming around, going to things like switched power um, and my start signal. So the start signal here, this is a really big wire that I have reserved for this, and that's because I wanted to make sure that I have enough gauge um, to match the gauge wire on this, and that's uh, pretty thick. So this yellow wire here that's coming uh, into, it actually comes in and around into this harness, uh, is the start signal. This guy here is the next big one. This is our switched power. This goes directly into the, uh, the actual switched power connector that distributes switched power. And it's all low amperage, so the, 
the, uh, the gauge thickness of this wire is appropriately sized for switched power on these three signals. As you remember, the positive battery power is right here, and that one goes directly to the positive battery power terminal right here that distributes uh, positive from, from this big guy. So now that we got everything essentially laid out, we're gonna be covering a couple of other topics in other future videos. One being the tachometer is gonna have a separate video tutorial on how to do the tachometer and how to hook up a uh, tach conversion module. And the second is going to be air conditioning. We're gonna do a full air conditioning uh, video. We're gonna be hooking up those two air conditioning lines to the lines down there and going to a condensing unit. But for now, all we need to do is essentially wrap this puppy up. So we need to disconnect as much as we can, overlay it on the side of the vehicle and start wrapping it up with some nice cloth tape. And that just about does it for me today, guys. The wiring is about 90% complete. We still need to finish up a few things and we'll cover that in subsequent videos. Guys, my name is Frank Macalusa from Garageaholic. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. We got this cool E24 LT1 that we're working on right now. Check out the website, check out my merch, check out the E30 N54 brackets kit. It's a swap kit to place the N54 into the E30. It's a really cool kit, guys. One of a kind, nothing else like it on the market. So thanks a lot guys for checking it out. Thanks a lot for watching me and take it easy until the next video. Later.